stocks can look like this, this, or even this. But if you're buying a stock, you're probably thinking about one crucial question. Is the price of that stock likely to go up or down? If you buy a stock here and sell it here, you make money. But if you sell it down here, you lose out. Sadly, there's no magic metric, but there are some helpful pointers. So we're going to tell you what they are and how to use them to help you find the value of a stock. Okay, it's definition time. And that can only mean one thing, an infographic explainer. So what exactly is a stock? A stock is a part of a company. If you like the look of Apple, you can buy and own a small part of it. If you own shares amounting to 0.001% of the total company, you're entitled to that amount of the company's value. But why do companies offer shares? Well, it's to raise money. They give away a portion of their company in return for capital that allows them to do things like launch new products, expand or pay off debt. All shares have a price, but this doesn't reflect its value. The price is market capitalization divided by the number of shares a company has issued. A high stock price or a low stock price is no indication of whether a share is under or overvalued. For example, a $1 stock with 1 million shares in circulation is valued the same as a $10 stock with 100,000 shares in circulation. Right, that's the sexy stock explanation over with. Let's take a deep dive into the matrix. That's what I said. It was, it's the same thing, isn't it? Let's take a deep dive into the metrics. Like my choice of clothes and music, we're going to keep things basic. The most basic and most widely used metric is price to earnings ratio. Let's bring in the blackboard. You divide the current stock price by the earnings per share. For the TLDR audience, a high number means a share could be overvalued. A low number or under 20 means it could be undervalued. Let's have a look at Meta, for example. 2022 was a rough run for the company formerly known as Facebook. 11,000 workers were laid off and the metaverse looked, well, complicated. Meta stock has plunged by 65%. At the end of 2022, its PE was 14.03. Now, remember, low numbers could mean it's undervalued. Well, six months later, its price had risen from around $120 to almost $290. Trailing PE ratio looks at past earnings. Forward PE prices in expectations of future earnings and growth. PE ratios can give a helpful snapshot of what a stock is worth compared to its past performance. But for a more detailed picture, you're going to need to dig a little deeper. Metric number two is the price to sales ratio. It's similar to PE ratio. But this time, you divide a company's market cap by its revenue, or in other words, a company's gross sales. Just a quick reminder that profit is revenue minus expenses. Now, price to sales is useful for companies that are making lots of money, but aren't showing a profit. A startup might be busy expanding, developing new ideas, or taking on new staff. It took Facebook five years to show a profit. Snapchat, or Snap Inc., has never shown a profit. In 2022, its revenue was $4.6 billion, but it still made losses of $1.4 billion. If you're looking for startups that have the potential to grow, you might want to keep an eye on their price to sales revenue. Here at Capital.com, we make explainer videos about investing in economics, giving you the insights you need to understand what's going on in the markets and to make informed trading decisions. We're also a trading platform ourselves, where you can trade stock CFDs right on our website or using our app. After this, check out our latest video on how to trade gold. For metric number three, you'll need to cast your mind backwards. Picture the scene. You're eight years old. You're playing Monopoly. You're losing to your best friend. 
getting the bank pays you a dividend card was probably one of the few bright sparks of an otherwise traumatic experience. And real life dividends can still be good news. It's the distribution of a company's profits to its shareholders. It's a way a profitable company can say thank you to their investors and encourage them to stick around. Dividend shares are good for investors who want a regular income. The dividend yield is a percentage and it shows how much a company pays out relative to its stock price. Large companies that grow slowly are more likely to pay out dividends. Think of oil and gas, utilities, banks and pharmaceuticals. In 2022, you might remember the price of this went crazy. When Putin rolled his tanks into Ukraine and the West hit back with sanctions, the price of natural gas just kept going higher and higher. Companies like Shell made bumper profits and they used some of that money to reward their shareholders. Shell paid out $7.3 billion in dividends in 2023, a 15% increase from 2021. Dividends and dividend yields can also be a useful tool for investors. Companies only give out dividends if they're performing well and have profits to distribute. The dividend yield also allows investors to compare companies of the same size in the same sector. If the dividend yield of one company is higher, it could represent a better investment because you'll get more for your money. But it could be a warning. If a company has underlying problems and its share price falls, but it keeps its dividend the same, the dividend yield will go up. You might be left holding an investment with a good dividend, but a falling stock price. Now, we live in a world of contradictions. At first glance, linking a dark film about the bloke who helped create the nuclear bomb with an attempted rebrand of a plastic doll invented in the 50s felt like a stretch. Are you ready for Barbenheimer? And yet, Barbenheimer became a thing. Our three indicators could be a contradiction all of their own because they could lead investors into a value trap. Each metric can help you identify stocks that are low in value, but this isn't gravity in reverse. What is down may not be about to go back up. A company might have a low PE level and its price might be low compared with past performance. But if the company's fundamentals aren't there, its price could just keep falling. In other words, just because a stock price is low doesn't mean it won't fall even further. Different metrics can mean different things to different people. Value traders might look for companies with a low PE ratio. Investors looking for income may want dividend stocks. And traders looking for growth stocks might focus on price to sales ratios. It all comes down to research. So where better to end than on a cryptic quote by Albert Einstein. If we knew what it was we were doing, it wouldn't be called research, would it? For more videos like this, check out our channel. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.